Amen. Grab your Bibles and turn to the book of Hebrews, chapter number 10. Hebrews, chapter number 10. Amen. I appreciate my wife's song choice tonight. I can tell her what I was preaching on, but it goes so well. Amen. The King is coming. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I just appreciate everybody from Sunday school teachers to song leaders to Brother David sharing in these prayer times to you being faithful in your worship. Thank you. You bless me. You bless me. Amen. Just appreciate the Lord. Before we get into the scripture, hold your Bible there, put your finger in there. I want to tell you a little story that I read that was intriguing to me about the swallows of Casparino. The swallows of Casparino. Uh, you may say, where in the world is Casparino? Well, I'll take you to California. How would that be? And I'll take you to Orange County, California. And I'm sure that you've heard of that. And uh, there is a little church in Casparino called the Missions Church. And uh, it has been there for hundreds of years. And uh, there's something that is unique about this missions church. And I'm not even going to talk about the inside of it. I'm going to talk about the outside of it, not even the structure of it. But for hundreds of years, there have been swallows that have been coming to the mission church of Casparino. In the eaves and in the beauty of the building, they build a very uh, uh, mud-type nest that they put there. And there, Brother Justin, as they build their nest, their young ones will be born. But every year, there is a huge gathering at the mission of Casparino, not for a church service, but because they come on a specific day, Sister Susan, to watch the returning of the sparrows to Casparino. If you'd like to go next year, it's March 19, 2019, that the sparrows will be returning. How unique is that, that they have it down to a day that the sparrows will be returning to the church. In fact, uh, a few years ago, Brother David, they had it down to March 17, that the sparrows would be returning. And uh, to give you a little bit of details about these these sparrows, they fly from uh, Goya, uh, Argentina. That's where they spend the winter months. And then in the spring, they fly back to uh, 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 this uh, church, the mission church there in Casparino. Uh, they're in Orange County, uh, California. How many of you look forward to spring and you know that the, the, the returning of the robin is such a welcome sight? Me. Me. <laughs> And I'm going to be one of those older folks that say, as I get older, the more I like spring, I'm glad that winter's over. Sorry if you're a winter fan, sir. Go down. I, amen. I, I have two sets of sweat glands as well. But I'd rather mow grass than drive in the nasty snow to work. Amen. I, I, that's just where I'm at. And so the sign of the robin, but we don't know here in uh, Central PA when the robin is coming. We know that when it becomes, they tell us, an average temperature of 36, that we will see the robin. Thank God that we've seen robins. They've been around, and, and uh, it's a great sign of spring. But we do know that the swallows of Casparino, that they will uh, uh, show up uh, uh, every year on, uh, on a particular day. And they come from Argentina. And they usually leave Argentina somewhere around February in uh, this particular year that I want to talk about, that they were to show up on March 17th. They left Argentina some 6,000 miles away. They left and uh, they were to be in Casparino by March 17th. However, 8,000 people gathered to see these uh, sparrows come. Uh, they made their flight uh, from Argentina this 6,000 mile plus flight and they fly about one a mile uh, up in the sky and they fly at an average of 18 miles an hour. Can you imagine that? 
Uh, and so it takes them a good month to travel that 6,000 miles as they are flying. And everyone gathered together. But there were no swallows that showed up on March 17th. A man came out on the, uh, on the edge of, of the church, the mission church, dressed up like a sparrow, hoping to chase them out. Uh, but they did not show up. And how hugely disappointed it was that they did show up. And the migration has been taking place hundreds of years, even before the mission was built. They just began to inhabit the mission. And they, 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 they flew there, Brother Eli. But this year, they didn't show up. And what a huge disappointment. Can you imagine? As promised, the city said it. March 17th, they would show up. But they did not show up. How disappointing. I wonder for the church. I wonder for the Christian. I wonder for the world. If we aren't like that because Christ hasn't showed up yet. Let me tell you, they showed up a day late. But they showed up right on time. And some may say Jesus is late, but he's showing up right on time. So don't let your hearts be troubled. Hebrews 10, verse number 37 says, For yet a little while. And he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. He shall come. And what a promise that Jesus Christ is coming again. Church, he's coming. He's coming just as the robin shows up. And just as the swallows of Casparino show up. Amen. Jesus Christ is coming. Sometimes, folks, let me just lay a bit of a foundation. Bear with me for a few moments. Sometimes people begin to look at prophecy and they look at it and they begin to shy away. I remember when I was in high school, there was a book that was written, Sister Susan, it was called 88 Reasons Why Jesus Will Return in 88. And you remember hearing about that? Amen. 88's been a long time ago. Amen. But he did not return. Amen. But don't let that be daunting to you. I looked at the news this week and I, I scoffed as I, I looked over a, an article. I didn't even waste my time to read it. It's, uh, there are some that are predicting that Jesus is coming back before the end of the month. Don't get caught up in that, my friend. He may, but, but don't bank on that. How many of you uh, uh, remember uh, 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 stories of reasons why he will come back? And, and folks said in the year Y2K, he'll come back, he'll show up. And I don't get discouraged. And, and I, I sympathize with folks who, who get, get, get involved in all that of thinking that they will know when Jesus will return. The Bible says that the angels don't know. Amen. Only the Father knows. But one thing for sure, Jesus Jesus is coming back. A prophecy can be daunting at times. As one person said, bookshelves are too high and too wide. Amen. Some things about prophecy is this. Is, and yes, we know about uh, the day of the Lord, the tribulation, the millennial period. We know about various things. And, and sometimes we have to admit honestly that there is uncertainty even in some of the prophecy. There are things that we know, but there are things that God has not yet revealed to us, but Jesus is coming back. Amen. Amen. He is coming back, my friend. And I believe that we need to encourage ourselves with that. Amen. That He is coming back. 
The study of eschatology or end time events. We're looking at death and eternity and the judgment. When we look at that, there is a certainty that God is in control of it all. Amen. And He holds all those end time events in His hands. Let me tell you that God is all about us having a vision. Amen. We should be rolling forward and looking forward to things in the future. All of our lives, we should be doing that. Amen. Because God is on the move. And Jesus, uh, 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 we know that the Word of God tells us uh, that where there is no vision, the people perish. We've got to have a vision. And part of that is to know that Jesus is coming again. Amen. He's coming again. Amen. God help us tonight. As we look at the Word of God, you'll find throughout the Word of God, from Genesis to Revelation, there is a picture, there is a, cons a consistency of Christ coming again frequently throughout the scripture, woven in the tapestry of every book from beginning to end is that Jesus is coming again. If you would think about it this way tonight, think about tapestry being woven and the completeness of it. And as you watch it from Genesis, from the beginning to Revelation to the end, and the tapestry is, and there are threads of red throughout, but yet there are threads of blue throughout. The threads of red is this, that there's a first coming of Jesus. Amen. That He's coming in a work of redemption. But there is also that of the second coming of Jesus. Amen. That He's coming again with that blue cord, that heavenly cord, that He's coming back for a bride. He's coming back for a people who have redeemed themselves and kept themselves and await the coming of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Throughout so beautiful it is the tapestry, the poetry amen, that Jesus is coming again and I wonder if tonight if we would begin to look around about us amen, if the stars wouldn't begin to bounce in their space saying Jesus is coming again, if the sun wouldn't shine a little bit brighter saying Jesus is coming again the waves wouldn't clap a little bit harder that Jesus is coming again, amen, all creation is a longing for the the coming of the Lord. Amen. So we as believers should also encourage ourselves and stir ourselves that Jesus Christ is coming again. Amen. Amen. He is coming again. We read in the Old Testament of Enoch. And Enoch, he walked with God and was not. He disappeared from this earth's view, but he appeared in heaven's view. Amen. And he spoke of the coming of the Lord. We'll repeat it again when we get to the New Testament. But listen what, uh, what, uh, uh, what, what, what Enoch said in, in, in the book of Jude. The Bible says, And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with 10,000 by the name of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that they are, uh, that are ungodly among them of their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and all their hard speeches which, have, uh, which ungodly godly sinners have spoken against him. So from Genesis to, to, to Malachi, uh, from Matthew to Revelation, amen, there are types, there are stories, there are parables, there are illustrations that Jesus is coming again. He's coming again. Amen. You think about Abraham. He saw a, a city to Rachel, who's builder and maker of the sky. We think about that of when we come into the Psalms, in Psalms 22, 23, and 24, that trilogy, if you will, David writes to us, and we read about the redemption of God and the re reconciliation, but we read about the return of Christ. Amen. So it's woven in the tapestry. Isaiah, he sees the returning King of glory. Zacharias, amen. He writes about a world that, that, that is recreated as a return. And, and Malachi, amen. That last book, he talks about years here uh, approaching footsteps of, uh, of, the, of the King. Amen. He is coming. 
Think about this. We come into Matthew, and all of a sudden we read, oh, we hardly get our toes in the water. We begin to read about John the Baptist as he begins to say uh, that there is a kingdom at hand, and you must repent. What is that kingdom? Amen. That Jesus Christ, amen, he's going to return. Amen. He's building a kingdom. We've got to be ready. And Jesus, before the eyes of his disciples, he gave them a vision there on the, on the Mount of Transparency. We, we read about him uh, in the book of Acts. Hey, uh, why stand ye gazing up into the heavens? Uh, he, he, uh, this one that is being taken from you. In like manner, he's going to return. Jesus is coming again. Yeah. Jesus told him, and he said, Behold, I go to a way to prepare a place for you. But when I go away, I will come again and receive you unto myself. He is coming again. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. We can go live our life as if He's coming again. Listen, it can be daunting because we've heard it all of our life. It can be daunting because so many have predicted and it's never come to pass. I'm not looking for the words of men. I'm not looking at someone's translation. I believe it was Mark Twain. He said, if we look at everybody's translation of Scripture when it comes to prophecy, if we simply look at that, we'll soon realize that we know nothing. Amen. And we've got to take God and His Word. Amen. And understand that He is coming again. It will cause us to get our house in order. It will cause us to purify ourselves. Amen. He is coming again. On the day of Pentecost, Simon Peter preached, Amen, that Jesus would come again. In the book of Romans, it's divided in three different sections. Uh, that first one ending with chapter number 8, and then chapter number 11, chapter number 16. And they all talk about the necessity of being saved because of the return of Christ. Paul wrote in Corinthians, he said, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. Well, David, you and I may never sleep. That's sleep or death. Well, we're going to be changed. But uh, your eyes may never close in death. Amen. I, I, I'm looking for the return of God. Amen. Christ's coming. There's going to be a catching away. Amen. The church is going to ascend and we're going to be translated. I love what 1 Corinthians 1 verse 9 and 10 says. For they themselves a show of us what manner of entering in uh, we had unto you and how you uh, turned uh, you turn to God from idols uh, to, to serve the living God and to wait uh, for His Son from heaven to be raised from the dead, even Jesus Christ, which was delivered, uh, which delivered us from the wrath which is to come. Do you know what the wrath which is to come? Amen. That which comes after the rapture of the church, the tribulation. Thank God that He's delivering us. Amen. You know, there's so much, even some folks, when you look at the rapture of the church. And I believe that it's pre-tribulation that the church will be taken out. There are some that believe mid-tribulation. There are some that believe post-tribulation. Amen. There are some pastors that will just say, well, I believe in pan trip it all pan out. But one thing that's for sure, we can confidently say, Christ is coming again. He's coming again. He's coming again. See, in the letters to Timothy, Paul speaks of the hope of the coming of Christ. Titus, he calls it the blessed hope. Hebrews says this, It's appointed unto man once to die, but after this the judgment. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. And unto them that, uh, that, that looked to him, for, for he shall appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Amen. He is coming again. Even the brother of Jesus Christ, when he wrote his, his letter, James spoke of the coming of Jesus Christ. Amen. As Simon Peter, uh, uh, he wrote about the blessed coming of Christ. And, and John, in his trilogy of the epistles, he wrote of the second coming of Jesus Christ. Once again, a Jude, he, he quotes Enoch and talking about the return of Christ. I need to tell you that on average in the Word of God, uh, that every 30 verses, if you would average it out, speaks about the return of Jesus Christ. 
I wonder how much scripture has to be given to give us value of doctrine. I believe if Jesus and the word of God says it one time, it's enough for doctrine. But if it's on average once every 30 verses that it speaks of the return of Jesus Christ, it is doctrine and we can bank on it and we can count on it that Jesus is coming again. Amen. Amen. He's coming again. The gospel is full of his death, his burial, his resurrection. But it's full of his coming again. If there was no resurrection, then there would be no return of Christ. But the resurrection cries out. Christ is returning. He is returning. Amen. I love what John says in 1 John 3. It's a beloved. Now are we the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall when when he shall appear, that we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope purifieth himself. Do you know why I preach on the return of Christ tonight? Amen. Because it makes us purify ourselves. What are our motives? How are we living? What are we doing without a vision that people perish? We need to have a vision that Jesus is coming again. The vision would cause us to live holy because he can come before this night is over. I promise you it would change people's attitudes. I promise you if we would live like Christ is returning, it would change our love toward God and our love toward others. It would change us to look more inwardly than outwardly that we would make sure that we are ready for the return of Christ. It would cause us to be motivated to share the gospel in such a compassionate, compelling way that we are compelled. Listen, I don't want any of my family and my loved ones to die and go to hell. Amen. It makes me want to reach out to them and share the love of God in a magnificent way. It will cause me to be wise as a serpent, but as harmless as a dove. It will cause me to want more of God because when I shall see Him, I will will be like him. Amen. It will release me from any type of corruption. Amen. And will release me to the redemption of God. You see, our hearts should long to hear what Christ has to say to us. In the book of Revelation, amen, as he speaks to the churches, he said, let him that hath an ear to hear, let him hear. Amen. I want to hear what God has to say to me in the Spirit because I want to be ready when He returns. Sanctification. Titus said it this way. He said, For the grace of God that brings salvation hath appeared unto all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, that we should live soberly, righteously, and God in this present world, looking for that blessed hope of the David and the glorious appearing of our great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Oh, God, help us that as we read the Word of God and He's returning, Sister Tina, that we live righteous. Um, um, talking about a message that should change our lives because it's coming back. It's daunting because some of us have felt that he should be back by now, but don't ever underestimate the mercies of God. Amen. He's waiting for souls to come. He's longing. It's not God's will that any should perish, but that all should come to redemption. Amen. He wants that. 
Amen. So as he tarries, don't think that it's fiction. Or don't think that God has not come through. Do you know what? On, on March 19th, 2019, Brother Cray, if the sparrows of Casparino do not show up on that day, I can almost guarantee you that they are still on their journey from Argentina. Though it's been a month and though they're only flying at 18 miles an hour, you be guaranteed that they will show up because for hundreds and hundreds of years, they've shown up in Orange County, California. And I want to tell you that although Jesus Christ, amen, He has not showed up yet, you can guarantee yourself that more confidently than the, than the sparrows of Casparino, than the robins of Central PA, Jesus Christ is coming back. Amen. So throughout the Word, amen. Uh, though uh, yes, He tarries, let them don't, don't let our hearts grow cold. Uh, but let us uh, all of a sudden let it rise up within us that He's coming back, that we want to uh, purify ourselves. Don't let the gangrene of sin set in, amen, but sanctify yourself, that you're ready for His return, amen, knowing that no matter how much anguish this world may give us, amen, He still is returning. Amen. Folks get caught up in the here and now. They get caught up in the thrill and the excitement of books and, and what someone may say. Don't get caught up in that. Get caught up in the Word of God more than anything. Don't become disappointed, but purify yourself that He is returning. Amen. You know why I believe that Jesus wrote so much when the Spirit of God led men to write so much about His return, Brother Justin, is because in our body, they refer to blood in two ways. They refer to it as red blood and blue blood. You may say, what's the difference? Because our heart and our lungs, those vital organs, are pumping the red blood out. Everything that is needed for the nourishment of our body to live and to function healthy. And then blue blood. It's just a reference of what they use. You know, you know some folks say, well, our veins are blue, is our blood really blue when it hits air? That's just the color of your, 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 vein, your vein, all right? But speaking so much that that blue blood has to go back to the heart. And the heart function is that it pumps it out to the body after it has passed by the lungs and got some good oxygen and getting all the nutrients that it needs so it can go back out and do its job. Sometimes Christ just wants us to know as we're looking through His Word and the Holy Ghost just wants us to know as we come to church that we need to get the blue blood out of our system and get the red blood back in that it begins to pump throughout us, that we purify ourselves. That we live like Christ is coming in the next moment because He is coming soon. Amen. Amen. When Gabriel puts that old trumpet to his lips, amen, and he blows it, and the saints of God begin to lose gravity. Those who died in Christ and sleeping in some cemetery, amen, they're going to come up, amen, out of the grave, amen, because uh, no longer are they going to be kept by death, amen, but they're going to be released. Hallelujah. What a great day that's going to be in that meeting in the air, Brother David. That's why when we bury someone we love, when we bury them in hope, this is not the end. Amen. For that child of God, what may seem like our worst day, living and functioning in life with out them is their best day ever. Amen. There's coming a greater day. Amen. When those, amen, have died in the faith and those who are keeping the faith and are ready at the return of the Lord, amen, are caught together in the air. Amen. What a reunion with the saints of old. Amen. And what a happy day when we behold Jesus. Amen. As He comes back. Amen. Wrapped in that blue thread. Amen. That He's coming a second time for people who are ready to meet Him. And our eyes have never closed in death. Amen. But we're changed in a moment. Amen. That rapture. That heart part. So, amen. That catching away. Amen. As Jesus comes as a thief in the night to gain that which is precious to Him. 
the thief works at night. Amen. Because he knows he wants to get the precious things in the dark. Amen. He comes unexpectedly. Amen. We're precious to God. He's coming as a thief in the night to gain back that which is precious to him. Amen. The second coming is a care. I said this this morning. But I believe that there are some of us, I believe this is the generation who won't see death. Do you hear me? I believe this is the generation that won't see death. Because Jesus is coming. When we look at the Word of God, 